hey, he can, he's following along today, that's a step. And I know that seems really small, but it, I think it can be the beginning of, of a self-esteem issues, effort, perseverance, those factors that can help a special ed student. But I'm out of my league there, so I'll just kind of touch up now. Like um, my colleague said, um, you were the first one to bring up um, SPED, the special ed. Um, am I to assume that all our scores that we're seeing in all the schools include special ed um, with all the grade levels? That's correct. And, and like at Monica Vista, we have 52 kids that are that are special ed one way or another. Uh, the hundred, uh, you start throwing speech in, then you can make that number look larger. But. 52 kids is a pretty good chunk. Um, and there's pockets where they're bigger in some grade levels than others. Uh, Mr. Dyer. Thanks, members of the board, cabinet. We are out of time. <laughs> um, Gonna, I'm going to go through these slides. What I really want to talk about is the right-hand side, the plan. I mean, the, the data is, is the data. The bottom quartile students are not growing at a higher rate than all students, indicating their, their growth is insufficient to close the gap. We really should be closing the gap at the bottom quartile. This should be surpassing the all students. Growth in reading needs to increase at third, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, and growth in math needs to increase at third, fourth, fifth, and seventh grade. Um, as part of our plan, we want to set, we want to start talking about um, all and 100%. The sooner we start talking about those sorts of things, the sooner we can get there. So all bottom quartile student growth percentiles will improve at a rate higher than our all groups and all grade levels. We have plenty of room for that to happen. Uh, Sean was talking a little bit about a multi-site ELD teacher coach professional learning community, and we have that going on right now. We have it established with four of the sites. The ELD teachers are getting together with some of the coaches on Wednesday afternoons, and they're talking about things that are common to all of those teachers' needs, that are, that are common to all of those teachers, and addressing those professional development needs, and then allowing the teachers to differentiate by grade level to talk about what's going on in their classrooms, how are they implementing the content methodologies, the grammar methodologies, and how are they tracking student progress and keeping things rigorous. We also want to establish guided reading in all of our K through four classrooms. Um, this is part of a district plan. The district plan requires a minimum of K three. We, we feel that we need a K four. We also know that our fifth grade classrooms will will take part in this also. Um, we also are going to provide tutoring for our bottom quartile students in third grade. This is done through a community partnership we have with Smart Health. Some of the Professionals who work there come over to the school on Thursdays and they work with one of our certified third grade teachers in reading centers um, and reading activities with those, those bottom quartile third grade students. There's also an opportunity for additional time on task with Title I tutoring. We can use Title I funds to pay teachers to teach after school on days other than Wednesdays. And they can target groups for specific needs, meet with them for a uh, predetermined amount of time and hit those targets and then move on to another set of students. So they're, they're, they're not just opening up their doors and letting any student show up, they're picking students for a purpose. Almost always homogeneously, need, uh, students with homogeneous needs and they meet with them for maybe four to five to six weeks and they set a goal towards the end for progress. They measure that goal as they go and they try to hit that goal at the end. We also have Title I money that we use to provide substitute teachers so that teachers have more time for planning with the coaches, more time to plan the, uh, the common, for the Common Core standards and the activities that are aligned to that. We also heard from um, a great educator earlier in the year who talked about a, some work she had done at a school where they were, they were rebranding the way they talked about things like reteach and enrich. And, and at that school, they said, we're not going to call it reteach and enrich anymore or some of the other things. We're just going to call it acceleration, an acceleration for all. And so we're, we're using that same principle at Papago. We're just, we're, we're not, sometimes at Papago, there, there have been times where we felt there was a, a negative connotation with, with reteach as opposed to enrich. Oh, you're in the reteach group, you're not in the enrich group, that sort of a thing. So 
every student can accelerate their learning and so we want to say use that term all again and call it acceleration for all um, in the planning meetings that we have with our instructional coach and our student achievement teacher we we are sure that we have it all of our all of our lesson plans are written at a depth of knowledge of two or higher This talk's really about medium growth percentiles in fourth grade reading and math show that these groups are achieving less than typical growth. We really need to pull that MGP up. And to do that, we have to pull up their SGP. So the fourth grade SGP in reading and in math will improve to a level that will improve the median growth percentile up to at least 50, which is typical. I'm still wrestling with uh, Dr. Lauren over there about why we would settle for typical, but it's not that we're settling for typical, we're just setting that as our target. For now, but 50 is the typical, and we want to get there and then see if we can go higher than that. Uh, again, like I said on the prior slide, guided reading will be implemented in all K-4 classrooms. One thing that we're doing in alignment with the shifts is we're asking the teachers to use two sources of, uh, of text for each lesson, one literary and one informative. They have to be at a high level of rigor and complex text. This gives the students exposure to that balance between literary and informational text. Our math interventionist, we're, we're, we have an open position for a math interventionist. That person will target third, fourth, and fifth grades. Again, homogenous groups working in collaboration with the teacher to identify students who need additional push, acceleration. Again, the acceleration could be students who are already performing at a high level going even higher, maybe uh, working with some of the algebra students in eighth grade, or students who aren't performing as high as they should be, helping them to remediate their learning. And again, the Title I is supporting tutoring and professional development, and acceleration is the focus for all learners. direct instruction to a whole group versus small group homogenous instruction. And that's the area at Papago where we see a great need. We need small group guided instruction in reading and math to homogenous groups with homogenous needs and progress monitoring for the kids in those groups. And they need, some of the other sites talked about, the students monitoring their own progress and keeping track of their data. That's huge. These students need to know where they are and where their target is. And we need, at Papago, we need to increase our time on task with those small group homogenous, uh, with that small group homogenous instruction. That can happen after school, it can happen during the day. A lot of us talked about guided reading and small group math instruction. That just, that has to increase. That's, that's really where the money is. If the students can operate independently at centers, while the teacher meets with three to five students in front of them for 20 minutes or so, they can make huge gains with that small group. So Mike brought up a point, which is the, the devil in the detail of not all teachers know how to set up centers effectively, whether they're 
been a veteran teacher and never expected to do that in the classroom instruction on a brand new teacher. So I guess the question to administration and staff is, how does that feed into the differentiated professional development that we provide for teachers? Because if it's an expectation that we increase small group instruction opportunities and that we're incorporating that into more and more of our classrooms, then we certainly have to support our teachers. And we, I don't think it's fair to expect the individual principals and their teams on site to have to bear that burden. So I'd love when we get to that agenda item down the road, um, that we have an, an opportunity to talk about that because I've heard that now through from several of the administration that that's an area of focus. And so I, I'd like to hear a little bit more about what are what's the structure in place to support PE and coaching for teachers to do that effectively. So that takes us through the complete set of data that we have prepared for you this evening. And in summary, I just want to pull together some of the common themes that were presented that do begin to speak to your question, Dr. Lassiker, about the district level supports and systems in place for our teams. We've talked a lot about, especially in ELA, the implementation of Common Core. We are this year in the first year of a K-8 implementation of the Common Core curriculum, Common Core state standards for the state of Arizona. Um, we've talked some, and it's been shared, somehow staffs are beginning to work with the instructional shifts, particularly in the ELA, and so what that means is that be, there's, there's a focus on increased text complexity for our students, a focus on writing across disciplines throughout the curriculum, and our teachers will need support with knowing how to do that in a highly effective manner. In order to effectively implement the Common Core, we've talked to you about the need for differentiation and having a plan for differentiation, both in terms of student learning and adult learning. And we are aware of that as a priority and will continue to work on providing detail in that area. You've heard a lot of description of data and how it's useful and how it's used within our district. Um, our focus right now is really on right-sizing our data system so that we we have a data system that is truly informative with a focus on growth for all students. Also, access for all teachers, so that important notion of collaboration <coughs> between all the teachers who serve the needs of children regardless of what instructional program, grade level, subgroup they're in, we want our teachers to be able to talk to each other, work together in order to make decisions in the best interest of all. And then finally, and related to the implementation of Common Core, that strong need for integration. We've talked about grammar. Um, within our curriculum units, our ELA units in particular, this year we have embedded grammar standards that are aligned as appropriate and are <coughs> placed within our units. And then, of course, a focus on writing through, um, through the implementation of ELA and the instructional shifts. So those are all things that we are working on and are placing a high value on and trying to prioritize our detailed thought about so that we can have successful and complete implementation of high priority items. So with that, I will I'll open the opportunity for any final dialogue or clarifying questions. And thank you for your kind listening and engagement. Any final, any final questions? Not. I want to thank everyone for your patience and uh, for coming here tonight and your candor as well. And with that, I will um, adjourn our special meeting. And